We're with Mark Reinhagen to talk about the undead democracy. And we're going to start off with uh, the big news yesterday that yeah. you're back with White Wolf. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing thing. Uh, after all these years and all these additions, uh, you know, I, I kind of sort of left things off on the second. And that was my uh, culmination of my work there. And now I'm back for the fifth. So uh, I missed two. Um, and uh, you know, sort of being on this amazing team, uh, and, and honestly, I, I think it's an amazing team. And, uh, you know, to sort of see the artwork that's already come out and sort of have input into this and be able to add all the things I've been thinking about all these years. You're like, oh, I wish I had done that. Oh, I should have said this. And now being able to do that, wow. Are you going to just be kind of in the background uh, for the team pitching in ideas or are we actually going to see books written by you again? Uh, yeah, basically I have uh, a beginning, uh, uh, I have to do 50,000 words in the next three months. Okay. So yeah, and then after that um, we're going to be one of the Make Believe Games will be one of the companies producing supplements. So we plan on doing a lot of, uh, of our own take on things and we're hoping to get some of them juicier properties, maybe even Sabat, uh, we'll see. So, uh, you know, certainly uh, I have a lot to say still in the vampire universe, and, uh, and they're perfectly happy to uh, let me have some say. Uh, I'm not taking over, you know, I'm, I'm one, I'm part of a team, uh, but, you know, it, it, it feels really good to be part of a team where we are all so aligned in what we want to do. You know, I think Martin created a, a really strong vision of how to do this as uh, a, a, con a continuation of the second edition and also something a little bit new. And so uh, I'm on board. Okay. Have you kept kind of looked at what the reactions were once you, you put it out on social media and once it was official? Holy smokes. <laughs> uh, I thought there'd be at least some people. I mean, it, it is the internet. Uh, would be like, hey, you rah, rah, rah. But no, it's been like, you know, uh, just check this morning, 500 likes, you know, 200 comments. That's on my personal page. All over the, all over the inter media, it's been hundreds of thousands, not hundreds, but tens of thousands maybe. I don't know. I have no idea. Okay. That's all things that are in the future. Let's talk a little bit about the things that you have here at Make Believe Games that are already out. And I'd like to talk about democracy because it's kind of a little, little bit different than what you usually do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, democracy is a game where you play, uh, it's all based on my experience as a political consultant. I was uh, with the president of Georgia, Misha Saakashvili, and I was very, very frustrated. And so finally I turned to him and said, sir, what do you see as democracy is? And he said, democracy is because I'm president, I get to throw those assholes in jail. And I was like, oh my God. And then that <laughs> night, I went to my friends who were all in the opposition. I said, what do you guys think democracy is? And they all said, when we win the next election, we're going to throw his ass in jail. And I was like, that's not how I, oops, I, I was like, that's not how I see democracy. So this is a game about compromise. To win the game, you have to negotiate with people and find a compromise. You have to find the middle. You have to find something that makes both you and another player happy. And then even though it doesn't make you completely happy, it's better to get half a deal than no deal. And so this game is basically about that. It's about finding the middle. Okay, it's basically, basically the prisoner experiment. Yes, it, it is very made much. Made it to a game. Yes, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, what is kind of the, the, the end goal or the, or the setting of this? So people work together as different political parties and they're yeah. all striving for? Yeah, you basically take one of the, on the, you, on the political wheel, yeah. you know, so you can be liberal versus uh, uh, tradition or, uh, um, uh, you know, it could be neutral and you have different uh, alignments on the political wheel. And then you're voting for cards, you're trying to take over places and, and uh, whoever has the most supporters in a location can win unless someone else combines their supporters with your supporters and then together you might have the most supporters. So it's all about coalitions and coming together. Okay, born out of frustration and I think it's, uh, it's, it's right on time, the game. Uh, I, I, I always uh, say to politicians, you need to play my game. Because <laughs> we need more compromise, folks. Not with the fascists, but with each other against the fascists. Okay, so... <clears throat> fascists are on my mind, as uh, you might imagine, lately, uh, here in America. 
Yeah, not only here in America, because you live in, in Georgia and it's not the US Georgia, it's the yeah, real Georgia. Yeah. And the, they have a lot of problems with the Russians taking uh, over the border. Uh, uh, absolutely, and uh, we have a lot of problems with nationalists who a lot of people think are paid by the Russians mm -hmm. to be nationalists. Just recently, this has been international news, they broke into my friend's vegan cafe and uh, were throwing meat on the walls. And we, you know, so yeah, uh, <laughs> there's fascists everywhere. Meat fascists. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, meat fascists. Okay. <laughs> Something completely different. <laughs> Let's talk about I Am Zombie, which is happily shambling along like Imhotep uh, on your 12-year plan, I think uh, it was. Absolutely. It's the first in a series of games. And uh, in this one, you play an intelligent zombie. And like, uh, just like Vampire, it's a whole complete world, and it's the first of a five games. Yes. And the next game is Xenofactor which is about alien abductions, and we actually decided we're going to come out with a small box version of that game. And this is our small box version of uh, uh, I Am Zombie. It's also a supplement called yeah. Toxicity. That's, that's kind it, of like 70s? A 70s, uh, uh, you know, uh, very much like the original D&D &D dungeon crawl uh, in the undercity of New York, or any big city. So. Uh, but yeah, we're, we're going to keep coming out with these things, and uh, it's a it's a card-based system. So you instead of having a character sheet, uh, you just pick five cards, and this lets you play a role-playing game without a pen and paper, and it lets you play very very quickly. And if you lose your character, oops, you can make a new one like that. So it's meant to be a, a great introductory way uh, to get someone into gaming, which is what I want more than anything else. I want people to role-play. I, I love role playing. I, I want more people to role play. Okay. After the years that you've now worked as a political advisor, kind of leaving a little bit the gaming world behind for a few years, yeah. how does it feel to be back? Uh, it feels great. Very happy to be here. Very okay. happy. Oh, I have one more game. And uh, um, uh, so we uh, just had a meeting, and uh, I'm approved for doing a white uh, white wolf vampire fifth edition board game oh. called Conclave. So it'll be out for Essen, not this year, but next year. We'll have a Kickstarter sometime in the next few months. And it's going to be, uh, we'll have a deluxe version with uh, busts of like Theo Bell as your clan leader. So all the seven clans will have a clan leader with busts and it will be, uh, it's going to be a fantastic game. I'm very excited. And uh, um, that's my, uh, yeah, that's my most thrilling news after, uh, uh, you know, also being uh, back on the, on, the, on the team to write fifth edition so i get to do a board game and i'm writing it's like a dream it's a dream come true okay conclave that's going to be about about the clan leaders kind of yeah it's actually uh share some mechanics with, with democracy, democracy. Uh, and, and it's uh, basically like a negotiation game like game of thrones or diplomacy only you can actually play a game in an hour or an mm -hmm. hour and a half so it's very rapid fire it's a lot of bluffing uh, like poker, and it's very vampire in tone because you're basically trying to screw each other over, which is, after all, the whole fun of vampire, right? <laughs> and can be hard sometimes in friendships, but yes. Yeah, so in this case, you betray each other so many times, it just becomes funny. Okay. Whereas in Diplomacy <laughs> or Game of Thrones, oh, yes. you betray them once after being together the whole game, and then they're very, very angry. So in this case, I, I think I've solved that problem. Because you, you 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 negotiate and break your word like 20 times a game, and at, at some point you just go, okay, fine. So, so I still have nightmares about diplomacy. <laughs> I'm really looking forward yes, to that. Yes, yes. Because you invested so much time, and then they betray you. It's like a, it's like a broken marriage. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's no fun. But I think if it's a shorter game, and and, you, and there's a lots of little deals, it's less painful. Much much less painful. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Bye. We're with Jason Carr from White Wolf, the new, the old White Wolf. It's kind of transcendent. You're the same, but you're new at the same time, and you're working on the One World of Darkness now. What is uh, what is the one, one thing you're working on right now, and what step are we? We're working on Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition, which is the newest version of the, uh, the role-playing game. And we are in the alpha design stage. And what that means is we have a core rule system and a set of design principles that we're ready to share with World of Darkness fans around the world. What are the design principles? When looking back at Vampire the Masquerade, mm -hmm. I think the principle was keep it simple. <laughs> we do want to simplify the game system. What we want to do is make sure that um, 
players who enjoy story can find the story immediately and enjoy it, but those who also like a more strategic approach to the game can find something that they enjoy too. We're borrowing freely from previous editions of the game, so you might see familiar concepts from any version of Vampire that's ever been in print, but you'll see some very new, very progressive and innovative new ideas as well. And let's talk a little bit about the world. Where, where are you going to take your inspiration from mostly, I guess, from Vampire the Masquerade, because it shares the same name, and less from Requiem? Yes, we are. That's fair to say. Uh, the story picks up right where Vampire Revised and Vampire 20th Edition left off. Okay. And we bring the story forward 17 years to tonight. So we will look at what's happening with uh, the Camarilla and the Anarchs and the Sabbat and all the clans. And we will fill in the story gaps uh, that have existed for almost two decades now. And so players who sit down to play Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition will be beginning with brand new stories in a world that they already love. Okay, and about the art design, um, looking around here, it looks like you're going for the same look that the V20 um, edition had, that you take photos and then you stylize them. Is that what you're going for? Not quite. You're going to see this weekend uh, some new art for Vampire okay. the Masquerade 5th edition. Our art director, uh, Mary Lee, who is uh, in Los Angeles right now, has uh, just completed work on the Toreador clan. And what we've decided to do is adopt two approaches for 5th edition. We'll have a very realistic form of photography that captures and shows you what the vampires really look like. And uh, the person leading that effort is Mary Lee, our art director. And she's using models and photographers and wardrobe and makeup to bring the world of darkness to life through photos. But we'll also use illustration, which is the more familiar method both um, black and white and full color, and those will capture moods and themes uh, of the world that people love. And so we'll have both of those uh, to show you what the world of darkness looks like in fifth edition. Okay, and you've been also uh, a big name in the LARPing community for, <laughs> for the world of darkness. Wow. Yes, Mind's Eye Theatre. I don't know if I would put it quite like that, but I've been involved with Mind's Eye <laughs> Theatre for a long time, yes. So, um, is the fifth edition of the, the world uh, of Vampire also going to support the LARPing community? Is there going to be a connection? Absolutely, there will be. Live action role playing is very, very important to our future plans. Um, it's uh, a very immediate and personal form of role playing. And Vampire the Masquerade 5th Edition and live action will become um, complementary to each other. And that includes Mind's Eye Theater at some point. Once 5th Edition uh, is available, we'll start looking at how we bring Mind's Eye Theater uh, into alignment with the new version of Vampire. Okay. And when you first announced uh, that White Wolf was back, that you're working on the One World of Darkness, uh, I, I was kind of surprised how, how far you were looking into the future and saying, yes, we want, we want to have a series, we want to have Absolutely. different media. Is that still what you're aiming for? Absolutely. I think it's safe to say that, that White Wolf is a very ambitious company. Uh, we're young in this incarnation, but we have extremely talented people and wonderful partners and licensees. And together, I don't really think that there's any doubt that we're going to have a very successful family of transmedia products. We have ambitions in video games, we have ambitions in console games, uh, movies, television, and really any media that you can think of that would be a, a good, fun expression of the world of darkness. Okay, and last question, the world of darkness and especially vampire was really big in Germany, it still is really big in Germany, yes, so are you still going to, to go international and produce different versions and make localizations maybe for German? Yes, absolutely. I think it's extremely important that we do two things. Um, one, that we localize all the products so it's available in as many languages as possible, as early as possible. But two, uh, I think it's ex extraordinarily important that as we go forward uh, we make sure that the people who are writing the world of darkness uh, are actively engaged in the in the communities in the environments and the countries that they're writing about so we would really love to see books about Germany in the world of darkness written by German people we'd like to see books about um, uh, Brazil in the world of darkness written by people who live and work in Brazil too I think it's extraordinarily important that we get that perspective Okay, so the new World of Darkness will have many flavors, will have many perspectives. I think it's fair to say it's a global brand. Okay.
Thank you very much, and I'm you're absolutely looking forward to what you're going to do with this. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time. We're at Montico Games with Montico himself, and I want to ask you a little bit about Numenera 2.0. So in Germany, we, we are running with Numenera, and it's going well, but now you've come out with 2.0. What are we going to do? What is this about? <laughs> well, so uh, the Kickstarter is next month, so the game will come out next year. And basically, this is not a whole new edition that's going to invalidate everyone's books or anything like that. Um, what we want to do is we want to embrace the idea, we've always said that in Numenera, uh, characters explore the past to build a new future. And so what Numenera 2 is going to do is uh, we have two books. One's called Discovery, one's called Destiny. And Discovery will be very, fam very similar to the existing Numenera core book. We're going to do some slight revisions to character creation and whatnot, but nothing that will invalidate you know, any of the other products. Everything will still be compatible. And then uh, Destiny will be a whole new book that will take the world of Numenera and take Numenera characters and give them the ability to take the strange, weird technologies that they find in Numenera and build new things, build vehicles, uh, build whole communities, uh, set up ways to defend uh, a community that they begin to shepherd, and maybe even have a campaign that lasts for years as they watch sort of this uh, uh, this community that they are uh, attached to grow into something much, much larger and uh, really develop something big. Okay. <laughs> even, so you can do even more and even weirder stuff and even longer stuff. And uh, you've already expanded so much in Numenera with new regions and with, of course, the, the guide to the computer game. Mm -hmm. So are we going to see more regions of Numenera exploring the continent more in the future? Um, probably, uh, in future projects. Um, in this project it won't be so much about new land as, as new ways to play the game. Yeah. Okay. And one other thing we of course have to talk about is the mysterious black cube okay. about <laughs> invisible sun. Because I, I think still many people are like, like a little bit past, what exactly is it going to be? So you said it's not based on anything, it's all completely new yes. um, mysteries and ideas. So can you give us a glimpse what it's going to be? So it, the world of Invisible Sun is very surreal. Uh, it's it's based on the the idea of surrealism with uh, almost a a, a dreamlike strangeness meshing with the real world. Uh, and so it's a world it's a world of magic. Uh, everyone who it, all the players are are use magic in some way. They use it in very different ways, but everyone uh, uh, expresses themselves through magic. And so the game is. Uh, that's why we have this big cube because it's it's filled with cards that detail new spells that you might have or or magical items that that maybe you found or even created uh, because one of the one of the character types is, is someone who actually creates magic as opposed to cast spells for example um, and so the the black cube is is filled with all kinds of different stuff uh, a lot of material in four different books uh, lots and lots of handouts to make the game uh, easier and more fun to play, props. Uh, the, the idea is to give a very, very deluxe, uh, uh, wonderful experience as you sit around the table. And do you have the feeling that this, uh, the, de the deluxe feeling is something that a lot of gamers are going for? We see a lot more deluxe versions of any game. Is it like the, the scene has matured? They want these? I, I think so. Um, you know, it's a, it's a different experience. You know, we, we, we kind of try to run the gamut. We, we have products that are, are very affordable. The Numenera starter set, for example, is, is just $25. But we uh, also have on the other end, you know, something like Invisible Sun. And I liken it to... You know, some of the great board games that are out there, um, you know, like Fantasy Flight makes these beautiful board games and you open up the box and you're pulling out counters and pieces and all these things and that's such a, that's a fun uh, experience in and of itself and I wanted to have that experience with, with role playing games. Okay. Thank you so much. Absolutely. We're with Larry Almore for a quick interview. Thank you for taking the time. And what are the illustrations or the work that you've done that people are most asking for or looking for here at your booth? Uh, okay. The, the one picture that sells the most is the, the original basic red box cover with the yeah. red dragon on it. Well, we thought we brought plenty of prints for this convention. We sold out like the second day. Uh, that's probably the most single piece because it it's, brings back a lot of good memories to a lot of, a lot of people who play D&D.
I think that's true for most of your illustrations. Yeah. People just look at them and they... It brings back emotions from yeah. when they were a child. Yeah, when they were young. And it's, it's a lot of fun talking to everyone. Yeah. And you also had a coloring book. Yeah. Although it's already sold out. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Well, which, which illustrations did well, you choose for it? Yeah. This, this is a book. Mm -hmm. It's a color book. Uh, it's a history of my life and it's all the paintings that I could reproduce at this time. And we kept one, so now people are ordering, ordering it, yes. But we thought we, we brought seven cases of these and sold them all out the second day. <laughs> so obviously we didn't bring enough. But yeah, this is a big book. It was a Kickstarter book. It set a record uh, two years ago for the most back fantasy book. And I didn't think I would make enough to even publish it, but it went crazy. <laughs> and, but it was it was a really happy time, you know. <laughs> and um, but it is a book I I, I wrote it. Uh, really, I done everything to to do that book. I wanted to make a book so my grandkids one day will know what their crazy grandpa was like. Because my oldest grandchild is only 11, so by the time they get grown, I probably won't be around, and so they can. Um, look back and see what I was I was about <laughs> okay. thank you so much thank you so much